Let us continue the chapter 1. Today's topic is equilibrium of bodies. When a number of forces acting on a body produce no change in its state of rest or of linear or rotational motion, the body is said to be in equilibrium. The meaning is, suppose a body is at rest and too many forces are acting on the body but still the body is not coming in motion then you may say the body is in equilibrium that is called static equilibrium again if a body is already in motion number of forces are also acting on the body but the body is not coming to rest then also the body is said to be in equilibrium this kind of equilibrium is called dynamic equilibrium you have to learn this definition the question comes like this when a body is said to be in equilibrium you have to say when a number of forces act on a body but it neither changes its state of rest nor the state of motion the body is said to be in equilibrium Kinds of equilibrium. There are two kinds of equilibrium. Static equilibrium and dynamic equilibrium. Static equilibrium means a body is at rest. Number of forces are acting on the body but this body is not coming in motion. See the example here. Two examples are given. Here is a block kept on a table. And two forces are acting on this block. This is one right side, one force is acting. Equal amount of force is acting left side. If you try this one, you will see though both the forces are acting on the body, that but the body will remain at the same position at rest. Similarly, in a beam balance, when the beam is balanced in horizontal position, the clockwise moment of force due to object on its right pan balances the anti-clockwise moment of force due to weights on its left pan and the beam has no rotational motion. The pointer shows zero marking. Some weight is kept suppose on the left pan and potato or something else what you want to buy if you if it is kept on the right pan, both having the same weight and as you know, beam balance having both the arms and both are having the same length. So, clockwise moment that is force into perpendicular distance as you know. If you calculate, clockwise moment becomes equal to the anticlockwise moment and that is why the body remains at rest. Some weight is kept suppose on the left pan and potato or something else what you want to buy if you if it is kept on the right pan both having the same weight and as you know beam balance having both the arms and both are having the same length so clockwise moment that is force into perpendicular distance as you know if you calculate clockwise moment becomes equal to the anticlockwise moment and that is why the body remains at rest dynamic equilibrium when a body remains in the same state of motion under the influence of several forces the body is said to be in dynamic equilibrium means the body is already in motion and few forces are also acting on the body but the forces are not able to bring it to rest the body continues to remain in the same state of motion. Then it is called dynamic equilibrium. See the examples. These examples are very important. 
sometimes it is asked give one example of dynamic equilibrium it may also be a question so you have to remember this examples number one a raindrop reaches the earth surface with a constant velocity the weight of the falling drop is balanced by the sum of the buoyant force and the force due to friction of air thus the net force on the drop is zero so it falls down with a constant velocity let me explain you you know the weight of a body always acts downward so if a raindrop is falling the weight of the raindrop is acting downward at the same time buoyant force and the frictional force frictional force is existing between the raindrop and air and you know the direction of frictional force is always opposite to the direction of motion raindrop is falling downward and frictional force is acting upward similarly buoyant force also acts upward buoyant force is exerted by the air because uh, the raindrop is falling through air so both the forces buoyant force and frictional force both are acting upward and the weight of the raindrop is acting downward in this case the weight of the raindrop becomes equal to the sum of the buoyant force and the frictional force so the resultant force is zero and the raindrop keeps on falling downward this is the example of dynamic equilibrium if it is asked you have to write two more examples are given an aeroplane moves at a constant height when upward lift on it balances its weight downwards third one is a stone tied at the end of a string when reeled in a circular path with a uniform speed is in dynamic equilibrium because the tension in string provides the centripetal force required for circular motion tension of a string it is exerted outward and centripetal force acts towards the center means inward when both balances then it keeps on moving uh, this is new topic for you centripetal force next part of this chapter i will explain you what is centripetal force and tension of a string means the tightness of the string uh, so if uh, a string is reeled where a stone is tied at one end and another end you are holding in your hand and reeling in that case two forces act one is uh, centripetal force it acts inward and the tension of the string acts outward both the forces balance each other and the resultant force is zero and the string keeps on moving so these are the three examples which are important next is conditions for equilibrium if it is asked write the conditions for equilibrium means when a body um, remains in equilibrium which are the necessary conditions then number one you have to write the resultant of all the forces acting on the body should be zero and the second one the algebraic sum of moments of all the forces acting on the body about the point of rotation should be zero means if it's not necessary that only one force acts on a body many forces at a time can act on a body so if the resultant of all the forces acting on the body becomes zero then that is the one condition and another one if the algebraic sum of moments of all the forces acting on the body uh, becomes zero that is another condition so these two conditions you have to uh, listen children balances then it keeps on moving uh, this is new topic for you centripetal force next part of this chapter i will explain you what is centripetal force and tension of a string means the tightness of the string uh, so if uh, a string is reeled where a stone is tied at one end and another end you are holding in your hand and reeling in that case two forces act one is uh, centripetal force it acts inward and the tension of the string acts outward both the forces balance each other and the resultant force is zero and the string keeps on moving so these are the three examples which are important next is conditions for equilibrium if it is asked write the conditions for equilibrium means when a body um, remains in equilibrium which are the necessary conditions 
then number one you have to write the resultant of all the forces acting on the body should be zero and the second one the algebraic sum of moments of all the forces acting on the body about the point of rotation should be zero means if it's not necessary that only one force acts on a body. Many forces at a time can act on a body. So if the resultant of all the forces acting on the body becomes zero, then that is the one condition. And another one, if the algebraic sum of moments of all the forces acting on the body uh, becomes zero, that is another condition. So these two conditions you have to uh, listen children. Listen everyone, uh, algebraic sum of moments, this is applicable when we solve the numericals. More detail you will understand about this when we solve the numericals, uh, means uh, um, considering plus and minus sign algebraic sum you have to find out. When you uh, mainly do uh, numericals, then you understand this topic. So I need to show you mathematically. Okay, next question is principle of moments. This is the definition as well as this is the main formula for solving the numericals. The definition is according to the principle of moments in equilibrium, the sum of the anticlockwise moments equal to the sum of the clockwise moments. Let it be up to this. Next class, I will discuss all the numericals. Numericals will be solved and few you will also Try at home, definitely. Then only you learn well.